to uh, continue with our conversion to binary, we sort of imagine we we start here. We start with uh, we start with the program that we ended with in the first in the first video, um, and we'll continue using the same example. This example of 102, where we step through powers of two a bunch of times to figure out the largest power of 2, large, smaller than 102, subtract that out and then repeat with the remainder. Um, and the real question is, and this is going to be over and over again when you think about algorithm design, can you do better? Can you do better? In this case, let's think about exactly what calculations are done when you're, when you're running this algorithm. Okay. So when you're calculating the largest power of 2 less than 102, you start by looking at 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 4, 8, 16, 2 times 32, and then finally when you look at the conditional is 2 times 64 less than or equal to 102. It's not. Okay, so you continue. That's fine. Except later on when you have this remainder of 38, you basically do what looks like a lot of same exact work again. 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 4, 2 times 8, 2 times 16, but not 2 times 32. So what happens is, uh, you know, doing that work once is what it is, but doing it twice seems, seems bad, seems wasteful. So what we want to do is not repeat work. And the way that we're going to not repeat work is to notice, well, if we want to get down to 32, Instead of starting from 1 and continually doubling up to 32, it's easier to go from 64 down to 32, in this case, by just dividing by 2. Okay, So that's fine. We can basically take our algorithm and just change it around a little bit. So what we do here is, well, the, uh, the first few lines of this algorithm look similar to what they were before, except, I mean, this part here, I should, let's, uh, let's redo that. These lines here represent the first lines of the outer loop of our original algorithm, right? So we can go back and see our original algorithm. These are the outer line, the first lines of the outer loop and the inner loop of the original algorithm. But now they're not nested, okay? We're just finding the largest power of 2 less than or equal to our value n once. And after we find that value, we're going to step down through the powers of 2 less than or equal to n in another loop, but that those two loops are not nested with each other. Okay? So sort of all the all the main work is being done and the only thing that's being cut out here is all the repetition of stepping from you know 1 up to 64 then 1 up to 32 again no no we go from 64 down to 32 if the number is bigger than 32 we subtract it out then we go down to 16 down to 8 down to 4 so in this case our first loop just like before the first loop is like the first time we run the inner loop that takes logarithmic time. The next loop then steps through each of the log n places within our, our bits of the, of, the, uh, of the array and subtracts out powers of 2 if they are um, if they're smaller than our number. So to go back to our example, we had 102. We calculate 64 with the first loop. And now, hey, 102 is bigger than 64. Um, a of 6, set that bit, subtract out 64. We're left with 38. Uh, I gets decremented. We're talking about 64 gets halved. Now 64 is down to uh, 64 is down to 32. 38 is larger than 32. Set that bit, subtract it out. You're left with 6. 32 gets halved to 16. Come back up again. Uh, 6 is not larger than 16, so we're not going to set any bit. 
but we're going to, okay, now we go down to 8. 6 is not larger than 8. Now we go down to 4. 6 is larger than 4. Set the bit, subtract out 4, and continue, okay? So this uh, sort of ends up doing all the important work that we were doing before and cuts out, cuts out the less important work that we weren't doing before. Now we have two loops, but they're not nested, and each loop takes logarithmic time, okay? We can ask ourselves again, we should always ask, her, can we do better? I mean, our new, our new runtime of the code is actually good. The runtime looks good, it's, it's logarithmic. The code works, that's nice, always nice. Um, turns out if you're clever, you can make the code cleaner or simpler looking, okay? The observation there is going to be, well, first question. What's the largest power of 2 no greater than, uh, I don't know, million, billion, quadrillion, quintillion, quadrillion, qu 25 quintillion, some, some big number. I don't know. I, I don't know what the answer is. You don't care. I don't care. Nobody cares. A more reasonable question is, what's the least significant bit of the base 2 representation of this number? And that is easy to answer. The answer is 1, and the reason that we know that is because this number is odd. I don't actually have to look at any of these beginning bits. I only have to look at the last, the last number, 7, and say, hey, this is an odd number. Since it's an odd number, um, since it's an odd number, the 2 to the 0 place must be 1, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite our algorithm, but instead of, instead of finding the biggest power of 2, first, find the smallest power of 2. Now, intuitively, I think most people try to find the biggest power of 2 first. It's called the most significant bit. We find it first because it's the most important bit, right? It's the one that sort of best approximates the number. But in this case, we're not trying to approximate the number. We're trying to get an exact representation of the binary representation. We have to find every bit, most or least significant. So let's, in this case, actually find the least significant bit first. So in this case, here's our algorithm. In this case, what we do is we see, is the number odd? If it's odd, like that big gigantic number, then set the smallest value to be the, the 2 to the 0 term to be uh, 1. Otherwise, leave it at 0. And then divide the number. Divide. We've taken an, an increment. Uh, we should probably think about how that's going to actually work. Let's... Uh, Let's step through. In this case, we had, let's say, the number is, you know, we had 102. So we have something like n equals 102. And we're going to say, great. n mod 2, that's not odd. i is equal to 0. i is equal to 0. Uh, this conditional does not hold. And then we're going to say, great n equals 51, and i equals 0 plus 1 is 1. We're going to continue. n is still greater than 0. Is n odd? Yes, it is. Great. a of i equals 1. n equals 51 mod 2 is going to be 25, and i equals 2. i equals 2. We come up again. Again, uh, we have. Again, we have. N is odd, so we're going to say a of i equals one. N is going to be set to be twelve. The number divided by two, integer divide. N still greater than zero, but uh, n is not odd. So then we're going to say n equals 6, i equals 3. Oh, wait, 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 wait. n is 51, and i is 2, n is 12, i equals 3. This is going to be, here, let's, i is going to be 4. 
four here. All right, get those three down here. Uh, this n is still even. n equals three. i equals five. That's odd. a of five equals one. n equals one. i equals six. Uh, a of six equals one. And after that, we're going to divide n is going to go to zero. We're going to return a. We see here we've set the sixth, fifth, second, and first bits just like before. Okay. The code is cleaner. It's probably harder to read if you don't know the, what it's doing. It's probably harder to decipher this code because it isn't maybe just the code that you would guess on its own. On the other hand, it is pretty short code. Um, and the method name in this case, you know, does help us some. Uh, but anyway, just like before, it has the same runtime, uh, still logarithmic. So great, we have cleaner code, but maybe harder to decipher code. Those are a little bit contradictory. But anyway, uh, the runtime is good. One more thing we might want to clean up. This code doesn't generalize very nicely. And what I mean is, well, let's say that we didn't want to convert into binary, but we wanted to convert into, uh, you know, a different base. Well, we can, we can keep our binary code very similar, but instead of saying, if n mod 2 is 1, set this equal to n 1, well, instead just set a of i equal to n mod 2. If, if n mod 2 is even, that'll set it to 0. Oh. If n mod 2 is 1, that'll set it to 1. Um, and this code generalizes nicely. By generalizes nicely, I mean, well, great. We can change our base. Instead of having a convert to binary, we can convert to any base we like by just simply changing what it is that we divide by, right? Instead of dividing by 2 and taking modulus 2, now we're going to take modulus by our new base, and we're going to divide by our base, OK? So great. Now I sort of by hand, uh, which is a little ugly, went through one example of how this worked. Uh, does it work? It does really work, but I'm going to do a more formal proof of how it works in another lecture. Um, that'll be one I'm talking about generally about proofs and loop, loop invariants. So that's going to be it for our conversion to binary. Thank you.